So now I wanted to show you some stitching stuff. This is going to be useful for more than just stitches. Like this is really more for clothing, adding stitches to pieces where seams meet up and that sort of thing. But you could actually tweak it to the point where you're getting panel lines. This actually might be good for, for adding in panel lines, depending. This is going to be UV shell dependent. All right. So I made a quick fill layer. It's in black. And then I added a black mask. And then I'm going to right click on that black mask and add a generator. So then in generators, you'll see right here on the top line is auto stitch. And it could not be easier to add quick stitches to your asset. You can see right there. Now this is going to be related to your UV shells specifically. So if you don't want stitches in a specific spot, you're then going to have to mask out on top of it. But it's a really good way to quickly throw in stitches. Like usually we have to UV the arm, you know, the sleeve of something separate from the main body. So that makes it a really easy way to add the stitches around the shoulder and the, the mirror stitches that are usually just on the other side of that seam. So it's great. You can use this in combination with a stitch brush, but you can get started with the auto stitcher and it can take care of a lot of those um, right off the bat. So you can go in and start to play with uh, that path position. So if it's too close to the seam, you can um, mess with the uh, where it lands. You can play with the stitch size, of course. With all that stuff. And if you crank the length way up, this is when you get an actual, this is where you get panel lines. So then if you need it to go in, it's just a matter of messing with the different solid values of that fill. So let's say you don't want it to be shiny. So you turn the roughness way up. And then if it stitches, so let's turn that down. Let's go back into that auto stitcher. Turn the stitch length down. So now we can see it's catching a little bit of light because I had turned up that height. Go back out to the fill and turn the height up. It doesn't have to be in a mask. It can be just outside of that. It could be its own paint layer, that sort of thing. Um, it doesn't need to be buried within here, but it does make it easier to jump in and edit the color if you want to, you know, do something like, okay, it's got like a reddish stitch line, that sort of thing. It's, it's, it's a little bit easier to go in and edit, I feel. So then let's say that this is correct, but you don't want it on that piece. You would then just add a paint layer and mask out on top. So there we go. So additionally, these can all live in the same mask. If you want to include extra stitches that are more hand placed, you can then do a paint layer that contains those. And there's some really awesome stitch brushes in the brush palette. The only thing about this is once you lay down your stitches, they're a part of that layer. You're not able to then adjust your brush, brush size and get them to update after the fact. So I always use a temporary layer and I figure out, okay, how, how big or how small do I want them? There's a ton of settings in here too. So you can change how much it slices between them. You can, you can ask it to basically cut that line for you so that it's got the look that it's two pieces that it's stitching together. There's a bunch of different stitch types down in stitch selection.
Or we could try doing its own. Let's just do it on a paint layer. To So now we can see that puncture is working. So it had to, had to do with masking. If you want to have a puncture, you need to have it on its own layer. But yeah, I'll go through and I'll figure out, okay, what color do I want it? This is also why having a fill at least works better because then you can edit the color a little bit easier. If it's in the brush, it has to be edited at the time that you're that you're painting it down. Right, because as soon as I change it, it's not going to it's not going to update anything that's already been laid down. So it's it's not perfect because of that, you know, it would be great if you could make adjustments and have all of those translate to what was already painted. And there's a lot of different settings in here, how many stitches you want, the thread type. There's a lot of different things. So it, it could take a while to figure out exactly what it is that you want to use. And also I have this on kind of a low resolution. So now you can actually see the thread is in there too. Turn down that seam and puncture. So now it's just barely there and it kind of messed up at the top up here. So it's like when something like that happens, you can't edit it on the fly. You just have to undo it and redo your stroke. Um, you can also turn on this lazy mouse and see if that helps a bit. But you can see it's kind of bending the stitches. So you might want to just stick with the tracking that it already gives you, but you can see that it didn't mess up those starting and stopping positions. Granted down here, it just cut off because I had lifted my brush away. But this combined with the stitches, the auto stitcher is usually a pretty good combination. You just have to find the right settings so that they look like they match. And additionally, there's also a similar brush, but it's the zipper brush. It works very much the same way, but it's basically just programmed with a zipper.